Greetings. Welcome to DAU's AI video learning series. This video will introduce you to DOD's campaign for an AI ready force and also introduce you to the four pillars of AI readiness. So the Defense Innovation Board, the DIB, they work closely with the National Security Commission on AI. And the DIB, they published a document entitled Campaign for an AI Ready Force. As with all these documents, you can get the link to that in the student guidebook. Now, in this document, they urge the department to take on a campaign level focus to achieve an AI ready force. So achieving this AI ready force will better position the department to seize opportunities and respond to threats in this rapidly emerging area. So what is an AI ready force anyway? So the DIB defined an AI ready force as a force that has the capability, the capacity to understand, design, develop, test, evaluate, deliver, sustain, and scale AI in support of DOD missions. They went on to say that to apply AI effectively and at scale, four pillars of an AI ready force must align. That's people, data, technology, infrastructure, and organizational design. With regards to people in the DOD workforce, we will need both technical and non-technical workers and leaders. The department's creating new civil service positions, and those will have the necessary knowledge, skills, and abilities associated with them. But we'll need access to many kinds of talent, experts inside and outside of the government. And this is gonna be a major challenge as AI skills are in short supply, and even the high-paying Silicon Valley companies are struggling to hire and retain people. So the department's going to need to blend recruiting, training, upskilling, upskill the current workforce to a large degree. And we're going to need to balance both internal and external help, collaborate with academia and our industry partners. For data, the department needs to access vast amounts of data. Having that data in the right format, available for the right system at the right time, that's foundational to enabling AI-enhanced applications. DOD must treat data as a strategic asset. And Josh Marcuse, he's the head of strategy and innovation for the global public sector at Google Cloud. He previously served as the executive director of the Defense Innovation Board and was the innovation advisor for the Undersecretary of Research and Engineering. He was a guest speaker at a DAU panel discussion on optimizing AI at the DOD. What he said about data during that session addresses this pillar very nicely. Let's take a listen to that. If you'd like to listen to the entire podcast, you can find the link in the course guidebook. You know, I think we talked a bit about data. You know, I would keep something, something Anthony said, and I don't mean this in a pejorative way, but, you know, when we talk about the U.S. government being an, uh, an owner of data, it, it challenges our assumptions about what we mean by ownership. So if you, if you know that the data exists somewhere in someone's um, server farm and their data warehouse somewhere, but you cannot get access to it, and you need that data in order to up to you know, inform uh, an algorithm. Do you really own it if you can't get access to it? Um, if you have all this data stored somewhere, but it's not labeled and you can't use it, is that a useful meaning of the word owning? So I would say an aspirational vision for DoD is that it truly owns its data. What I mean by that is it doesn't just have a copy of it on a CD somewhere but it truly masters its own data. It knows what data it has. It shares the data strategically with those who need it when they need it. It has the ability to move that data into multiple redundant locations to protect it, as well as to move it to the edge where, where a user needs it. And so what we think about owning data has to, has to move from, we think someone somewhere has stored it to we know how to really use it. And that is a, big transformational idea. My favorite story about this was in my old job at the Defense Innovation Board in 2017, in one of our first meetings, um, Gen General Jack Shanahan, who was mentioned earlier, who's a personal hero and friend and mentor of mine, um, testified before the Defense Innovation Board about uh, a, a, a computer vision problem that he had that he was working on in USDI. And he said, you know, we are uploading 22 terabytes of data a day for this mission, and we are drowning in data. And one of the board members, Milo Medine, quipped, you know, I store 22 terabytes of data in my garage. And they all sort of laughed at him in a good-natured way. But what I came from that uh, awareness is that DOD is definitely drowning in data, but it is drowning in a puddle of data, not a sea of data. 
DOD's understanding of data is really rooted in the limits of our own cognitive abilities because we think about data in human terms, like how much data can I organize in my spreadsheet? Instead of thinking about it in machine terms, which is how do I orchestrate a collection of machines in a network that are able to make sense of this data in a way that a human can use human cognition to get meaning from it? And so moving from the, you know, the, the human scale of data to the machine scale of data is, is part of that transformation. I'm talking about orchestrating data and treating data as a strategic asset and understanding that data is the fuel that will go into your AI engine to the degree that you want to customize your outcomes for your organization. You need to feed it your organization's data to get insights that are relevant for you. And that that data needs to be housed in an infrastructure platform, right? These data sets are very large. And so, you, so it's, you really find yourself with, in a situation where it really only is possible to do sophisticated and interesting things with modern commercial AI if you're using modern commercial cloud computing. And we can talk about, about cloud and all the cloud plays here. But you, you need to have some people that are competent at software. Because once you have this cloud and data, someone has to do some manipulation of that data um, to be able to wrangle it and prepare it and tag it and label it. And, and you know, we should ask uh, our fellow panelists to talk maybe about automation of labeling and some certain things that are making these processes easier. But, you know, if you're, if you're new to this field, you have to understand 80% of your effort is going to go into figuring out what to do with this data and making sense of this data in structured and unstructured formats. And that requires knowing a bit of software and having some competency in software. And so you really only get to machine learning after you've had thoughtful conversations about data cloud and software. And then once you get there, that opens up the next series of conversations about the influence this has on what your organization does and how it does it and the sense of why it does it and it opens up questions about what your strategy is. So moving on to technology, so the application of AI in any context is going to require us to have sufficient tools and infrastructure to do that. Uh, those basic technological requirements are going to have to be met before we can use AI algorithms and put them to use. And often those legacy systems that we have are going to be a major barrier to us adopting uh, these new, new algorithms and new systems. And as we just heard from Josh, doing things with modern commercial AI is really only going to be possible if we have modern and commercial cloud computing. So we're going to need access to, to industry standard software, sufficient compute, and some of this takes a significant amount of compute to train some of these systems. Um, storage, uh, drowning in a puddle of data, we're going to have to have access to a lot of storage so that we can have access to our data when we need it. Uh, authorization to operate, uh, sufficient open architectures, secure networks, uh, learning environments. Enterprise cloud is really the only way to make that data accessible, affordable, and secure across, this, uh, across the department. So while many of us uh, today still leave our modern high bandwidth cloud environment that we enjoy at home, uh, when we go to work into DOD, we step somewhat into a, some of us step into a, a bit of a digital backwater there. Um, but DOD has and is making significant progress in this area. At the time of this recording, a number of contracts are in place with commercial cloud companies like AWS and Google and Microsoft and Oracle. And many of these uh, also accommodate classified data. So that brings us to the fourth pillar, referred to as organizational design. This has to do with how DOD organizes and the processes that it puts in place to deploy its people so as to consistently produce effective outcomes and at scale. Organizational structures need to adopt iterative loops for data collection, AI application updates, and inputs for human decision making. Policies need to enable rapid iterative development with security and oversight in line rather than serially. Incentives need to encourage leaders to take managed risks, push through bureaucratic inertia, and deliver capability effectively and efficiently. Since the SecDef highlighted the importance of AI and its effects on future combat in the 2018 National Defense Strategy, DOD has made significant progress in this area. The department released an unclassified summary of the 2018 DOD AI strategy. In 2019, Defense Innovation Board met for 15 months to study AI, and they released the ethical principles and insights into the use of AI in combat and non-combat. And then in 2019, the department established the overarching strategy to cultivate an AI-ready force and to accelerate the adoption of AI. And in 2020, DOD adopted the AI ethical principles 
and designated the Jake, the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, as DOD's lead for coordination, oversight, and implementation of those principles. And then an extremely important document came out in 2020 was the DOD Data Strategy. It provided a strategy to transform the department into a data-centric enterprise. It proclaimed success cannot be taken for granted, and it's the responsibility of all DOD leaders to treat data as a weapon system and manage, secure, and use data for operational effect. And an outstanding document is that National Security Commission on AI and their report to Congress in 2021. And then the DOD AI educational strategy came out in 2020. And then in 2021, the DepSecDef signed a memo implementing responsible AI and leading to the DOD responsible AI strategy and implementation plan. In 2022, the Jake and the Defense Digital Service and Advana were all merged together into a new office, the Chief Digital Artificial Intelligence Office, CDAO. And then in June 2022, the current DOD guidance on responsible AI was released. If you would like to take any of DAU's AI courses and earn credit toward an official AI training credential, click here. Or if the, for whatever reason this link doesn't work, you can find the, the link in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please check out the other videos in this series. And if this helped you out, please like and subscribe.